Good evening, wonderful people, great beer friends, wherever you are. On the face of this very planet, we welcome you to another edition, very exciting edition, expository, exciting, revealing, and informative version of our live presentation this very evening, the evening of the 30th of August in the year of our Most High Elohim, Chiko Kekabi Amapromi in 2020. The time now is 3 minutes past 7 p.m. in the blessed land of Biafra, and I presume the same number of minutes past the top of the hour. Regardless of where you are domiciled around the world, we are very proud to say that we are not only the largest mass movement on the face of this very earth, but also the largest indigenous broadcaster of its kind anywhere on the face of this planet because people are listening right across the length and breadth of every time zone of this very earth we are immense we are huge we are relentless we are unstoppable we are undiminishable we are unbribable we are not going to relent we are not going to stutter we are not going to reverse our movement is onwards and ahead until we get to our final destination which is the unquestionable and undiluted sovereignty of the republic of biafra that is why we are here that is why we exist and that is why we must do what we can to make sure that the whole world understands the need for what we are doing and be able to partake and participate in it. We are coming to you live via my Facebook page, the official one, please. Mazen Namde Kano. We are, even more importantly, because I now notice that a lot of people are listening via our app, IPOB Community Radio app is live and I want everybody to download it on their device because it is low data usage. Very, very low data. It is radio. Therefore, the cost of data is very, very minimal. Very, very insignificant. Everybody must download it and be able to listen to us via that very platform. It is IPOB Community Radio. It is the fastest download on Android and also on iOS. It is everywhere and people are listening, as I said earlier, in nearly 154 countries around the world. People are listening to us and they have joined us this very evening. It could be your morning, it could be your afternoon, it could be your midnight. Therefore, I would say good morning, good afternoon, good evening and good night to some of you. There is no other like us. We are resolute, we are determined, we are relentless. Relentless in our pursuit of that, which is right before God in heaven and man on this very earth. If you don't have your pen and paper, believe you me, there is no need for you to listen to this broadcast this very evening. It is going to be very deep and incisive. It is the type of program that we make once in a while designed for those who are discerning enough to understand the peril that we are in and willing and able to do something in order to extricate us from it. I welcome all of you all over the world who have joined us this very evening. It could be your morning, your afternoon, depending on where you are. My name is Enam Dekano. I am the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra. And by none, the largest mass movement of its kind on this very planet. I lead it. I am... The director of Radio Biafra, the director of Biafra Television, and by the very special grace of the Most High, Chupukikua Biyama Binigwe, the only entity we bow before, a servant of the wonderful people of Biafra. Before we go any further, we must pray. A very quick and short prayer. After that, we then delve into our tutorial i will call it this evening you must pay very close attention because somebody rang me earlier today and said to me that you have managed not me of course it's chico kikabiyama that is doing it all i do is to pass on the message that heaven has given to me to give to those who are living 
And I said to this very person that Chikoki Biyama is the one who is in charge piloting the affairs of men on this very earth. And then he corrected himself and he said that Chikoki Biyama has been able to use you to make what was considered impossible 10 years ago to become possible. And I asked him what that thing is. He said that our people are now beginning to reason as they should. Our people are now beginning to reason like Biafrans once again. Our people have now regained their analytical mind. Our people are now discerning. Our people now question and look for the right answers. It is not just about asking a question. It is looking for the right answers. Our people are now able to do it. That is why there is this hue and cry all over the world. Our people have risen up to demand for an inquiry into the very dastardly and disastrous slaughter of the innocent in Enugu, and we are not letting go, very, very critical. But let us pray, first of all. And whilst we do so, I do hope that you have your pen and paper very handy, have it ready, and listen attentively. Listen very, very attentively to tonight's broadcast. It will change your life. That I can assure you. Tonight, we are going to pray a prayer of repentance and restoration. A prayer of repentance and restoration. Because the same way that your house over time gather cobweb and dust, and there is need for you to cleanse, to clean, to tidy it up, the same way that even the computer that you're using over time collects bugs all over the place, and the result of that is either slowed down or it crashes, so does our habits and our brain especially. And for those of us who may have succumbed to harmful habits, those of us who are no longer faithful or do not understand what it means to remain very faithful and then to testify the goodness of the living God in heaven. Tonight we are going to pray. Because, let us be very honest, we have all been there at one time or the other. Sometimes it is guilt, sometimes it is shame, and sometimes it is regret. But we must take heart, because the same Chukwokika Biyama that we worship, who is in heaven, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, he offers love, forgiveness, and restoration. If this fits you this very evening or suits or fits your nation, so to speak, we are now going to pray for repentance and restoration that will help us to find renewed joy, hope, life, and consistency in our pursuit of the freedom of our people that Chukwu Kikabiyama mandated us or created us to pursue on this very earth. Chukwu Kikabiyama Puruminyani Neluhima Adonai El Shaddai, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, the Lord of all the hosts of heaven, the ancient of the as they would say, the ancients of the ancients. Everything you created is yours. Every glory and adoration is yours. Everything that we are today likely to become tomorrow is all in your hands. They belong to you. Every glory is yours. It doesn't belong to any man. It is only to thee. We are tired of our sinful struggle in life, both as individuals, as a collective, and as a nation. And we are not ashamed to admit that before the congregation the assembly of men and women all over the world, that you may know that it cometh from our heart, that we are not deceitful. We don't pray this prayer in the quiet, or should I say in the secrets, or secrecy of our home. We are praying it that the whole world may hear us, because right now, our nation, the nation of Biafra, as a collective, we feel very distant from you. Our choices have not led us into the right places. We have listened to the whispers of the enemies instead of your words in your own scriptures. And the result has been disastrous. The result has been Miyeti Allah, a terrorist group forming their own vigilante, something that is unheard of anywhere in this world. 
We once walked with you. Our heart. Tender. Because you led us in the spirit. Yet little by little. We exchanged your truths for temptations. And deceit. That led many away from you. Instead of. Taking thoughts captive and confessing them immediately, we allowed ourselves to grow totally out of control. Repentance was not in our vocabulary. Blame upon blame, cover up upon cover up, or trying to reason and rationalize reason has never worked with you. Nobody can rationalize their cover-ups or their blames. They only give birth to deeper sin entanglements. Yes, you created us in your image, O Almighty God of Israel. You know our thoughts before we even speak them. You x-ray the hearts of men and see through our sham excuses and intentions. Your spirit has warned us repeated, repeatedly, but we ignored you. Disappointment and discouragement have taken their toll on your children. So today we are confessing before the whole world our desperate need as individuals, as a collective and a nation for you. You have promised us that if we will confess our sins, you will forgive us and make us clean again. We truly need your forgiveness. Repentance is on our hearts and lips. We want to turn around and head another direction back to you. We will him. But we need your help. Just as you created the world out of nothing. Create a clean heart out of nothingness in us. You have forgiven us our sins. You have restored our lives and the fellowship we once had together. You do not condemn because you are God and you will not disown your own, which is IPOB and Biafra. We are your children forever. But we take all the blame. We own our own sin. We are the ones who broke fellowship with you. And we are crushed over the way that we have come to thee and treated thy word and your holy name. We ask for your forgiveness, your love, your abiding grace and your mercy that this same family of IPOB that you ordained in heaven and manifest on this very earth at this time, at this very age, may live to fulfill that which you have promised, that which you foretold because your words are here and amen, that this Biafra may come in our time, that mankind may know that indeed there is no greater power than thee, that you are truly the almighty God, the Lord of hosts of the heavens and this very earth. And this Biafra will come. And your children, Biafrans all over the world, will adore your holy name. We shall sing songs of joy unto your holiness. Every generation of Biafrans that will ever have the honor of walking this very earth shall offer ceaseless praise and adoration unto your holy name, that they may know that indeed we are the children of light, to the glory of your name and your name alone, now and forevermore we pray. He say, he say, he say, we are live and direct, please. I don't need any complaints today. I want people to download IPOB Community Radio and listen to us because the whole world is listening. If you can take selfie and post them, so can you also download IPOB Community Radio and listen to this very live broadcast this evening.
We are on satellite. We are on FM across Biafra land. But also importantly and critically, we are on my Facebook page as well. The suppression is going on. Facebook is not going to stop. Don't expect them to stop banning us. They will keep suppressing. They will keep banning us. But they will get tired. They will understand how resolute and determined we are. And when that dawns on them, they will then know they are backing up the wrong holes that they have been doing something absolutely horrible. Who knows even then, as we have prayed this evening, they too may even pray for repentance and be forgiven. We are proceeding very assuredly towards our program this very evening that the world may bear us witness that we are the bearers of truth. There are some things that we lack as a people which we must correct immediately. We must learn and understand how to be disciplined. Discipline is not just about the way you conduct your personal life. It is about the way you relate to other people, the oath that you're under, and your ability to always do that which is right. To be obedient, to lay down rules and regulations, very, very important. Or else everything we are doing is a joke and it is a mess. The reason why we are where we are today is because of, I keep saying it every blessed time that I come on air, our inability to be rational enough to dissect and digest information in a way that it enables us to make the right critical decisions at the right time. That is the essence of reasoning. Very, very important indeed. And if we are a race of people that have risen, please write what I'm saying down. It is very, very important, please. I beg of you. If we had risen as a people together, as a collective, over all these years, the mess we are in now, we cannot be in it. We would have learned our lessons and we would have made some life-saving, critical decisions as a result of that. Today, we would have been a better people. But because we always allow envy, greed, and jealousy to cloud our sense of judgment, we always gravitate, you know, we always go back towards reasoning like the people that we have been rejecting and condemning all this while. This evening, we are going to start from the bottom up so that you can understand what we have been saying over the years. We are going to analyze Jonathan's accusations regarding Obama's meddling in the 2015 zoo elections. Because, oh, how do I put this? Because we did nothing then. That was the reason why Obama managed to impose a fellow Islamic jihadist in Buhari in power. And because he got away with it, the late Buhari, of course, Abba Kiyari also imposed Hopo Zodema on Imo State. They have gone to impose almost at every level of leadership in our land. This is something our people don't understand, that the Fulani, the Janjaweed, they play a long-term game and that they have help abroad. Why am I saying this? Please write this down very carefully because this is the most idiotic mistake our people always make. When the white man came to our land and said, yes, you people, all of you, all every Biafran is Igbo. When we use the word Igbo, it means every Biafran because we all are. If you like, believe it. If you like, you don't. I am not going to romance nor massage your ignorance and stupidity. I tell you the truth. Go and do your research if you have time and resources to do so. Now listen very carefully. When the British came and discovered, not discovered, when they came to Biafra land, they went to Arochipu, they saw a temple, something, exact replica of what you have in Jerusalem. You know what they said to us? You have no history. By saying you have no history, it means you have no relatives. And if you have no relatives, believe you me, you are in very serious trouble. Because there is a saying where we come from. When somebody wants to abuse you or curse you, they will say, which means... You will live in want. And those who are supposed to come to help you will not have anything either to come and help you with or to come to your rescue. 
Meanwhile, as we are busy trying to distance ourselves away from Israel and the world Hebraic family, meanwhile, nobody is stopping the Fulani from trying to assume that they are Arabs. Nobody. And in so doing, they manage to get the help of every Arab nation you have on earth right now, lobbying and working for them. This is how foolish we are as a people. We don't reason. You need relatives. You need relatives or else you will perish alone and in ignorance. Why am I saying this? I am now going to play for you Jonathan's interview. Anybody who is a student of Radio Biafra, if you're old enough to be listening to me, listening to us since, nine, since 2012, if you, are, if, you are discern, if you are intelligent enough to have listened to all of my broadcasts in 2015, even the night of the election that brought in, that they rigged and brought in the late dead Buhari, who is now in a grave in Saudi Arabia, I said one thing that night. All of you, you are running all over the place. I was on Radio Biafra Broadcasting and I said to all of you that Jonathan is going to capitulate. I told you by the, I told you that Jonathan will lose the election by 200,000 votes. I also said to you that as I'm live on the air right now speaking to you that Obama is putting pressure on Jonathan to resign. Some of you did not believe me. Some of you did not. But some did. Those who understand the divine nature of our mission, they understood what I was saying. Those who we are, who can see in the spirit, those who more people who can see, or more people who can see, they knew that what I was saying was, and I said to you that the American ambassador was pressuring Jonathan to concede defeat. And I said to the whole world that Obama wanted a fellow Islamic jihadist, a terrorist to take over. I said it then. Some of you did not believe me. Some went as far as saying, oh, that is what he says. He's a the can. Oh, please leave him. That is what he keeps saying all the time. But today, I want to prove to each and every one of you, beyond every conceivable doubt that I was correct, everything I tell you is true. There are three kinds of people on this earth. People who accept the truth the way it is. People who are envious because you speak the truth. And people that resent you because it is not them. That those are the three kinds of people you have, especially in black Africa. And I cannot help it. Eligwe, heaven put words in my mouth in spirit, and I proclaim it, and it comes to pass before sons of men. It is not my own doing. I never, I never for one day thought or felt or said to myself, oh, you're going to do this never. So for some of you who may think that I'm doing this, I am not. I am led in the spirit. That is why we have accomplished something that no other group of people has been able to do in the history of our nation. No other group has been able to do it. Nobody can. If you try and you will fail, you cannot do it because you're not called to do it. Why am I saying all of these things? When I told you about Jonathan, you thought I was joking, isn't it? But tonight I'm going to play something for you. Some of you have seen it. But tonight we are going to analyze it. For the whole world to hear and understand that everything I tell you on Radio Biafra is gospel, it is divine, ordained in heaven. There is nothing man can do about it. Ordained in heaven. Nothing. And then you meet an Anyoku, jealousy and envy is rubbish before us. Because we have the grace and you don't. This IPOB has the grace, you don't. If you are not part of it, you cannot participate in this grace. I say it with every authority under the sun. And I want to prove it to you now, that we are always right. You may not like it. Some of you may go back and become even more envious. Tonight, also cause one be now soon. You cannot be like us. You can never be. Yes, you cannot. Listen to Jonathan. And I want you to reference the program that I made on the night, should I say on the eve of the election in 2015, before they rigged in the late dead Buhari into power. Understand it very well. People say that we insult, I will, if you are an idiot, I will tell you you are a fool to your face. I will tell you the, that you are an idiot. You are a fool, I will tell you. You are a baby, sabo, too, I will tell you. You are an aspiring, sabo, I will tell you to your face, wherever I meet you. I go, I traveled all over the world and I went to the USA and I told them what I felt about the people we are shocked. Ask Kenawan on any. 
He took me to the, a group of indigenous people in California, asking what I said. They were in shock and horror. I tell you anything I want to tell you in your face. You're, there is nothing any bagger can do. Nothing, absolutely nothing. Not absolutely nothing. Listen to Jonathan, please. 11. I want you to listen to the former president of the Federal Terrorist Zoological Republic of the zoo that Britain created. Listen to him. And you reference my program on the night of the election. Go and find it. Uche, go and look for it. Or form and look for it. Anybody who has access, look for it. And want that, to, that to eve of, of um, election broadcast, go and bring it. And that same night of election, bring my broadcast. I want it to be replayed for the world to know that Elohim sent us. What I say, man can, you, mortals cannot, mortals can, what I see, mortals cannot see it. That is why when you give me advice and I don't take it, please don't take it the wrong way. The time for that, your advice hasn't arrived yet. Uh, we see things that mortals cannot see. You cannot see it. When I said this thing, Jonathan was in panic. Jonathan could not believe. He could not. He was wondering how did Nam the Khan know what is happening. I told you what was happening. And now listen to Jonathan, please. That you may know that Chukwu Biyama is on our side. That Elohim we worship is with us. Listen. The level of interference by the America, Obama's government was very overwhelming. This is the voice of Jonathan. It's not as if I couldn't have won the election even with that. Mm -hmm. But if, by my own thinking, and also the way some of that will look at it, they go outside the normal diplomatic relationship, then it should be mentioned. Now listen, Jonathan, after this year, I, I commend Jonathan to be honest, he's a, he's a statesman. Jonathan is a statesman. I commend him. I can't criticize him in any other way, but good luck, Jonathan is a statesman. I commend him and I have respect for him for that. He waited all these years. Now the zoo is in trouble and he is telling you what happened. The same thing Obama did to Libya. The same thing Obama did to Libya to destroy Libya and plant terrorists is exactly, is exactly the same thing he did in the zoo by putting in the late dead Buhari I want you to follow this very carefully exactly what I told you that night when I said that Obama was interfering in the elections some, some fools could not understand what I was saying they said oh he's just making it up has it not been confirmed from the mouth of an ex-president from Jonathan's mouth itself and I want that broadcast found tonight the broadcast my broadcast of the eve of the election of 2015 and the one I made on that same night when they were going to polls and voting you will hear it. I told you that America was putting pressure on Jonathan to concede. I told you they would rig the election, that Jonathan would lose by 200,000 votes. Exactly my prediction came to pass exactly that way it is. Exactly the way it is. Let our people don't know anything. Do you know the reason why Obama was helping uh, the Janjaweed North to win? Because they are all Muslims, they are all Islam. Because the Fulanis are not ashamed of saying we are subservient to Saudi Arabia. I want people to understand, to reason, because the Fulanis, they have relatives. Using their religion, they have relatives everywhere. People who can fight for them, people who can stand for them. But you, who can stand for you? Okoko, okay, okay, who can stand for you? Nobody. That is why they're killing you. That is why Mietiala has formed a vigilante group. You cannot reason. You cannot reason. Your brains are not working properly. But here, after listening to us, you must reason. M-U-S-T, you must reason. If you like it or not, you must reason. All of you, together. Listen to Jonathan, please. Very carefully. Obama was meddling in the elections. Obama, contrary to U.S. laws, Contrary to U.S. laws, Obama was meddling in the election of Nigeria, meddling in broad daylight because he wanted a Muslim to take over. They had their plans all laid out, well cleaned out and well made. And now Jonathan is confessing it. What I told you in 2015, on the night of the election, Jonathan is now confirming in the year 2020, five years after that. He's not confirming it. Some of the things that we, you hear us say on Radio Biafra is true. But out of shame, the same way that we, the whole world knows that Buhari is dead, out of shame, they don't want to concede. Let, let, let it not be that Nam the Khan is right. And they have gone as far as uh, 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 trying to get those they can deceive. To think, oh, don't talk about it. Don't I said to them, to hell with you, I'll talk about 
Buhari, dead Buhari, because it's the truth. Any, any day I see the truth and I run away from it on this very platform, the glory of Elohim will depart from us. We have come to preach the truth. And we are indestructible by man. Only Chukokikabiyama can, not man. So you understand it. What I told you in 2015, on the night of the election, Jonathan is confirming in 20, 25 years after that. We see things that ordinary people cannot see. Please listen. And you will hear. There is a place Jonathan will mention something and you will be shocked. You will know the reason why Enam Diazikiwe was not given the prime ministership of Nigeria. You will understand the reason why Abuli Accord did not stand. A lot of people are wallowing in ignorance. A lot of people are moving about in ignorance. Our job here on this platform is to cleanse your brain, to remove every vestige of black stupidity from your membrane so you can reason properly like a human being. So you can listen very well like a human being. Listen to Jonathan, please. Listen to Jonathan. To President Good Luck Jonathan. In the year... Listen to Nigeria at the eve of election. After Obama even issued a statement directing Nigerians to vote for the next... Who sent who on the eve of the election? They sent John Kerry, the U.S. Secretary of State, to go and meet with you, the late dead Buhari, you people must reason. This is why they say oh, you are paying eighty-five thousand uh, dollars to, to consultants. Do you know how much the zoo is paying? Do you know how much a full and a cabal contributed to Obama's re-election that made it possible for Obama to send John Kerry to go to the zoo to go and see an opposition leader? Has that ever happened before? But you don't reason. You claim you went to school, of you went to school, you read the political science. You cannot reason. If you cannot reason, what are you doing on this earth? Okay, what you are called working? What is your job? If you cannot engage your brain to be able to reason properly, I want you to understand that Chukwu Kabam is with us. Listen, please. Chapter. Mm -hmm. That tells you something. Tells you something. You not sweep this is under the carpet. Mm -hmm. If a foreign country, whether African country or even there. America or any other country interferes with our own elections. We should mention it. Now you can understand. Obama interfered with the elections in Nigeria. Even Jonathan now has now come to concede that the whole Chibok Gears thing was organized by Obama administration. Executed by that midget in Kaduna, El Rufai. Some of you are blind. You are blind. You are blinded by stupidity. By a black African stupidity, you cannot reason very well. Chibok girls planned. Planned and well executed to remove Jonathan in power. They wanted Muslims to be in power. They need Islam in the zoo, Nigeria. They want it and they are going to get it. All of you are blind and so foolish. I heard some interest talking about uh, airport has been reopened. I said, you're, you're so daft, it's untrue. Somebody came to your house and stole one million naira from you. And then came back and gave you one kobo in return. And you're jumping up and down. You're an idiot, a complete idiot. Complete fool you are. That is why I have no time for, for, for morons that cannot stand them. They say, oh, oh, he's very harsh. Why won't I be harsh? If you're a fool, I will tell you you are. Somebody stole one million naira from you. Come back and give you one couple and you're throwing a party. You're telling me about any airport. What useless any airport is that? The ordinary tarmac. Not our engineering call in the volunteers can build in one week. You are jumping up and down. Look at how they deceive you. Chibok girls. Organized by Obama and El Rufai with the late dead Buhari. Abak Yali and go, full on a cabal, deceiving all of you. And you, you, you wake up and you talk about uh, our Nigeria, this is our Nigeria. Uh, uh, we don't know what is happening. You people are fools, you know nothing. I will insult you because you're an idiot, if you're an idiot, I'll tell you you are. Let us listen to Jonathan, please. Let's listen to him. To what President Jonathan has Remember, to say. Listen. Mm -hmm. How do we get these girls out? Yes, Jibok girls. Within a couple of days, mm -hmm. we saw people going to the U.S. Mm -hmm. to pay back our girls' placards. Yes. Oh, why? Mrs. I... Obama, did you see Mrs. Obama carrying bring back our girls? Did you see her? All planned, all well orchestrated, planned, full and, Ica, full and Islamic uh, uh, brotherhood, cabal, they planned it. You saw, all of you saw Obama.
You bring back Habakkuk also. They all planned it to paint Jonathan black, to destroy Jonathan. That a Fulani Janja will be coming and take over our waterways, take over our farmlands on Daruga. Tell you that Miyetia, the terrorist group, can form vigilante across the country. And all of you, you moronic, idiotic zoo animals that look at created, all of you are just there looking more sheepishly like a bunch of idiots that you are. You cannot reason. You cannot reason, can you? Let us hear Jonathan, please. And of course, uh -huh. uh, the Mrs. Obama received one of those placards. Obama, Mrs. Obama. I cannot take responsibility for the adoption. I don't control Boko Haram. They are criminals. But as a president, of course, you know, it's not the president that goes to the field. You have uh, security and intelligence officers that do the work. Mm -hmm. Let me admit that, yes, maybe they do their best, but their best was not good enough yes. for us to recover the girls. That does not mean that I'm trying to remove myself from any blame. Yes, I may not be blamed for the action, but I could be blamed that my security and intelligence say, are not strong enough to be able to rescue the girls. Do you see how a statesman talks? I have, I can, you can say Jonathan all you like, but the man is a natural born statesman. He even took responsibility for the burgers because it happened under his watch. Compare that with these morons, this scavenging, desert-dwelling, cattle-heading animals. You see the difference between a Biafran, somebody who by nature is cultured, and a bunch of vandals from the depths of hell. That tells you all you need to know. Obama interfered. Why did Obama interfere? Let us go to Ojuku and Aburi. <laughs> so you understand. When I tell you people that the alliance against us, you don't know. Eh? Even the even the, the complete idiot who may be on Facebook yapping and writing rubbish, do not know the amount of enemies. Biafra. Biafra. Have. He doesn't, he has no clue. Had no idea. Every day, Biafra, when is it coming? They have no understanding the hurdles we need to negotiate and cross before we get to the promised land. They have no idea. They think you wake up in the morning, you write to Trump, you write to EU, Biafra will come. They are insane. I used to say on this platform that Biafra is the last miracle, and I used to say it for a reason because of the obstacles and hurdles in front of us we need to overcome. This is one of them. American president from nowhere is against a, a head of state because Jonathan is a Biafran. They cannot allow him. No, it's, it's impossible. He cannot stay there. I want you to pay particular attention to what I'm going to play next. And I said this evening, this program may last up to three hours. So be prepared. If you don't have um, data, you go and borrow data from. So go and borrow. You buy on credit. You must listen this evening and learn. After tonight's program, you will know that reasoning is very important in life. And when you go through Jonathan's experience, when you go through the experience of Nam Jazikiwe, you go through the experience of Ojuku, believe you me, you need to go back, go back into your room, turn off the light, and fast and pray for God to give you the capacity and the ability to reason. You pray for 30 days, I'm telling you the truth. If you look at, you don't need anybody to educate you on anything. Look at how they treated Jonathan. Look at how they treated Ojuku. Look at how they treated Azikiwe. That will tell you all you need to know. That the people you claim you're with, you're not with them. Or those that claim they're with you, they're not with you. That is what informs how we run IPOB and why IPOB is the most successful freedom fighting movement in the whole world. Not Despite the fact that no politician in Biafra land is, is in support of what we are doing. Because they are, they are cowards, of course. You know that very well. But yet we are waxing strong all over the world. Have you asked yourself why that was made possible? Any day you understand it, that day you respect IPOB. You respect IPOB. Now let us go to the next one so that the world can hear very, very well what has been happening to us. And after this program tonight, I want you to put one and one together. All I, I don't want you to forget IPOB. I want you to cast your mind back. Ask yourself this question. Why was it that Nam De Azikiwe, a frontline militant agitator for independence for Nigeria? 
the only man who did not inherit the mantle of leadership across the whole of Africa. Ask yourself why. Ask yourself why Aburi did not stand. Ask yourself why they lied against Ojuku and said Ojuku declared war and sustained the narrative for nearly 52 years. They sustained it for, for five decades. Blatant lie. Even the journalist in Lagos or Abuja writing or Ibadan writing that lie, he knows it's a lie, but he will write it. Ask yourself why. Now we are going to discuss Aburi. And Ojuku is here. All of you have seen it, but you did not pay attention. Our job here is to get you to pay attention to the things you ought to pay attention to. That's what we are doing. And I'm going to play that same interview. And I want you to listen very carefully to what our eternal general has to say. Our overall supreme leader for life. What he has to say about Haburi. Let shame befall our enemies. And this evening, you will see, I've shown you the hand of America. At this time, I'm going to show you the hand of Britain. And you'll be, you'll be wondering, but what did we do to them? Why is it that they want to, to suppress, to clamp down on Biafra? Any day, as I keep saying, believe you me, any day you go into your bedroom and you think, and you discover the reason why they're against us, you can never be a sabo in your life again forever and ever. Never. Listen to Jubu and listen very carefully. To our leader, the only genuine general you have before he passed on. Listen to him, please. Listen. But at the end of it, uh, I don't mm -hmm. want to go because these things are all, the tapes are available. His English is Queen's English. Some of you may struggle to understand he is learned. He's a learned man. Highly polished, highly educated. Some of you may struggle with the, the, with the crispness of his accent and his tone. But please do pay attention. He is the Biafran head of state. Pay attention to him, please. He is late, but to us, he will remain our head of state. Listen very carefully. The records are there. The records of Aburi. In fact, only about two weeks ago, I saw a set of the records again. So the Aburi records exist. The transcripts are available. They're available. But we talked about the Nigerian situation and certainly at the end mm -hmm. everybody says oh you told them this you did that the fact was that our case was so clear yes case for biafra and at aburi that i actually i actually believe at the end of aburi that the problem was not the one listen probably some ambassadors in lagos who were the problem was not going at the end of Aburi. Our leader knew. He said some ambassadors in Lagos did not want Aburi to stand. So I am telling you today, Britain does not want restructuring. All of those blood-sucking, demonic neo-colonialists, they don't want restructuring. That is why the Fulani Janjaweed can never restructure. I need you to understand this. Ambassadors. These are white people from Europe and elsewhere. They have no business with the governance of black Africa. Absolutely nothing. Now, ask yourself, in 1967, why was it that some white ambassadors in Lagos did not want Haburi to stand? Because Haburi standing meant that the eastern region, which is Biafra, will have an independent economic system. Because before they sent, and I'm going to tell you tonight, it was Britain that he planned the coup. I'm telling you the truth. You may be shocked, but it's the truth. The coup of 1966 was planned by the British. The reason being, they wanted to destroy the economy of the East under Dr. Michael Opera. Michael Opera had the fastest growing economy in the whole world. In the whole world on this very earth. Dr. Michael Opera of the Eastern Regional Government had the fastest growing economy. We were manufacturing things. Britain could not stand it. Britain did not want to see it. They planned that very could to destroy us. One day it will happen. I'm saying it now. It sounds like um, <laughs> it's, a, it's a joke. One day it will reveal itself. And say, oh, 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 my goodness. Oh, my son, I'm the kind of was right. Of course, I'm always right. I'm sorry to say this. Some people don't like it. I'm, I'm a human being. I'm a mortal. I'm nobody. I know that. But uh, I get it wrong. 99, I get it right 99% of the time. Maybe I get it wrong 1%. 
I want you to listen. I want a full of all the idiots, all the Abuja contractors, all the baby sabo with feeding bottles. I need you to understand that you don't know the amount of enemies you have. You have no clue. You have no idea. This evening, I want to come to you, Obras. I want to do a slight revelation. So you will understand the enemies you have that only Chukwokekabi and Elohim can save us, not man. I need you to understand it tonight. Are you listening? It was ambassadors in Lagos, not go on, ambassadors in Lagos that put pressure on go on. Abandon Aburi. The same people you're going to say, oh, give us restructuring. <laughs> you are dreaming. You're wasting your time. Let me listen to my leader, please. Listen very carefully. Those in Lagos who were uh, pressing for something else. Yes. Because we understood each other. We agreed on everything. Oh, Jugu and go on understood each other. The drafting was, in fact, my chief secretary. The drafting of our Buddha Accord. With two other chief secretaries from the other side. Yes. I said, no, no, no. And drafted and agreed. We looked at it. We agreed. Listen. General Ankara read over the whole. General Ankara was the then Ghana head of state. At the end. Mm hmm. Asked us if we wanted to amend anything. No. After the whole agreement was made, General Ankara asked Ojuku and go on, do you want to amend anything? They said, no, we understood each other. We know what we want for our country. We want it to move forward. But meanwhile, white ambassadors in Lagos, we are not happy. Ask yourself, why are they not happy? What is it about Aburi that made them uncomfortable? Because restructuring back to the regions will allow people the autonomy to grow their economy. Uh, but these criminals, these neo-colonialists in Abuja now, they don't want it. Because if you do it, the ingenuity of a Biafran will come to the fore. The intelligence of an evil man will rise up. You cannot, you can't stop it. So the best way for them to stop it is by bringing darkness. Darkness is full of a Janjawidism. Are you following what I'm saying tonight? Do you know, have you heard this before, that Ojuku and Gowon had no problem? They agreed, they drank champagne, they shook hands, they did everything, they now came back to Lagos. White ambassadors in Lagos said no. And that is Britain. We don't want it. So that Opera can be growing economy of, of the East, so that this evil, these people can rise up again. These stubborn people can come up again. They said no. Because you know why? They know I have discovered what they know about who we are as a people. That is why they are frightened. That is why the, no matter how many reports Amnesty will write about the killing of our people, they will stand on it, they will say no. We are at ICC. Have they called our case? The answer is no. They can never call it because they, they know that Biafra is the light of Africa. They know that any day that Biafra stands, that Africa will stand. So what they have got, done is to go to the source and switch off the light. Proof, they just uh, have proof fuse. They took the fuse and they, and they walked away. So everything you are doing, connecting every cable everywhere, it can, until you put in the fuse, it can never work. And what is that fuse that Britain pulled away? It's called freedom. Now you understand it, don't you? Now you understand it. Only if some of our people know what we know. You don't know what I have seen. You don't know how far we have gone. You don't know why we do things the way we do it. You don't know why we say things the way we do it. You are confused. You don't know. If you don't know a Jewish, you ask questions and you'll be told. Now listen carefully. This, what I'm telling you tonight... I'm telling you that almost 70% of people don't know this. They don't know it. You don't know the amount of enemies you have. You have no clue. Now, listen very carefully to what our leader has to say. Listen, please. No. At the end of all that, mm -hmm. the position was so good. Very good. Between Biafra and Nigeria. Listen. Ankara drove Jack Gawan and myself yes. to the airport. Yes. Jack was sitting on his left, I was sitting on his right. Mm -hmm. He was in the middle. 
Yes. And in the course of that journey, at, at a point, mm -hmm. General Ankara shook his head and said, oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. If only we can go on like this, everything would be all right. Yes. I'm in Ghana. Yes. Ojukwan Gowan, in Ghana. I was the one. Mm -hmm. As I do now from time to time, I go for the dramatic. Mm -hmm. Suddenly I picked up Gawan's hand. Ojuku took Gawan's hand. Put it on Ankara's Put it on, on lap. Ankara's lap, yes. Uh -huh. Brought my other hand, placed uh -huh. it on it. Yes. And I said, General Sir, mm -hmm. hold us together, I want to say something. Yes. So General Ankara put his hand on top of the two hands. Mm -hmm. And I said, General, I want to assure you mm -hmm.